Welcome to the WIFTIS training video that introduces users to the spatial fire planning process available in WIFTIS. Two types of planning processes are available in WIFTIS, FMU planning and spatial fire planning. Depending on an administrative unit's agency affiliation, one may be preferred or mandated over another. This video focuses on the spatial fire planning process and how it can be implemented successfully for an administrative unit. Upon completion of this lesson, students will be able to understand what the spatial fire planning process is and how it differs from the FMU planning process, understand the role that data managers play in managing the spatial fire planning process for their units, and understand how data managers can prepare their unit for a switch to spatial fire planning. Spatial fire planning is an optional planning process that uses shapes to spatially represent a unit's strategic objectives and management requirements. Spatial fire planning is managed by WIFTIS users assigned the role of data manager. Data managers can upload, manage, and associate shapes to represent their unit's planning direction. Spatial fire planning is flexible and allows data managers to make changes as needed throughout the year. Depending on a unit's agency affiliation, choosing spatial fire planning over FMU planning is the decision to manage the unit's fire management plan spatially. Spatial fire planning is managed from the data management tab in WIFTIS. From here, data managers develop and manage text and associated unit shapes on the four subtabs, as displayed in this graphic. With spatial fire planning, strategic objectives and management requirements are represented by shapes. In this example, you can see four strategic objectives and three management requirement shapes. Spatial fire planning requires spatial data, whereas FMU planning does not. In this graphic, you can see that strategic objectives do not overlap each other, but provide full coverage for the unit. Management requirements, in contrast, overlap strategic objectives and can overlap each other as well. Spatial fire planning offers a clean and simple way to manage an administrative unit's planning direction in WIFTIS, as data managers can better depict where a unit's strategic objectives and management requirements actually are on the ground. The visual representation of planning concerns assists line officers, fire managers, and resource specialists assisting with incident decision making. Spatial fire planning will also help eliminate redundant entries in WIFTIS. The primary difference between spatial fire planning and FMU planning is that spatial fire planning requires spatial data and FMU planning does not. With spatial fire planning, shapes are used to represent strategic objectives, management requirements, and other unit shapes. With FMU planning, shapes may represent FMUs or other unit shapes, but again, spatial data is not required. Strategic objective and FMU shapes, if used, are managed nationally in the same database using the same geospatial data standards. Data managers submit these shapes to their agency's WIFTIS GIS contact, which in turn enables the data set in WIFTIS. A unit can determine who their WIFTIS GIS contact is by looking on the WIFTIS webpage under Data on the left-hand column. Management requirement shapes are not used in FMU planning, but are required in spatial fire planning, and these are managed at the local unit level. Other unit shapes are managed locally and in a similar fashion, regardless of the planning process chosen for a unit. Most importantly, shifting to spatial fire planning provides greater control for fire managers and eliminates particular challenges inherent to FMU planning. 
With FMU planning, if an incident's planning area includes a small part of a particular FMU, all of the strategic objectives and management requirements for that FMU are included in a decision and require consideration as a result. Spatial fire planning eliminates this problem. With spatial fire planning, the planning area drawn for an incident only includes those strategic objectives and management requirements that it overlaps because these sets of text are now represented as individual shapes. In this example, FMU 5 is a multi-part FMU that contains an active incident in its southern half. The FMU contains three critical values that are addressed in three management requirements. These values are indicated in red. Note that no critical values fall within the incidents planning area in purple. There are also three strategic objectives for FMU 5 which you can't see in this display. In this example, the three management requirements and three strategic objectives listed in WIFDIS for FMU 5 must be considered when developing a decision, even if the values or objectives are not applicable to an incidence planning area. This poses a challenge frequently encountered by fire managers when developing documentation for an incident. With FMU planning, the list of resources or values that require consideration in a decision can be extensive. If spatial fire planning was the selected planning process for this particular unit, the location of critical values would be represented by management requirement shapes. FMU 5 may be called Strategic Objective 5 and is now represented by the unit-wide strategic objective, full suppression. The remaining two strategic objectives would become management requirement shapes. And for this example, one strategic objective and one management requirement will require consideration when developing a decision for this incident. This is quite an improvement over the FMU planning example previously. As a result, documenting a decision for a unit that has chosen spatial fire planning may be less intensive and time consuming than if FMU planning were selected. While this example represents an actual unit, its content is fictitious and does not represent planning direction for the unit. Before switching to spatial fire planning, data managers must collect information from land, resource, and or fire management plans to determine which data should be uploaded into WIFTIS as a strategic objective, management requirement, or other unit shape. Depending on an administrative unit's agency affiliation, the uploaded data may serve as the unit's spatial fire management plan, and this requires consideration. With regards to strategic objective shapes, determine which planning direction applies to the largest areas and lean towards using those for strategic objective shapes. When developing strategic objective shapes, ensure that the entire unit is covered as these shapes are used to create a unit boundary. Remember from the example earlier that strategic objectives do not overlap. With regards to management requirement shapes, scattered critical values or small areas of values can be represented by management requirement shapes, either single or multi-part. The unit boundary is used to clip management requirement shapes. This prevents units from adding requirements to neighboring units accidentally. Create other unit shapes for values or areas of concern that you don't want appearing in the list of values for a unit. Units can choose to keep their current FMU shape layer if the shapes and codes are representative of the strategic objective shapes and codes the unit wants to use for spatial fire planning. 
If FMU shapes or codes require edits or a new strategic objective shape layer is warranted, data managers must develop and submit their new strategic objective shape file to their agency's WIFTIS GIS contact. The same geospatial data standards apply to both FMU and strategic objective shapes. Returning to our example, let's say the administrative unit wants to switch to spatial fire planning, but keep the current FMU layer. The FMU code in our example, FMU5, will remain in the national database, but will now represent a strategic objective. The strategic objective code will be FMU5, and this will confuse users. A better plan would be to submit an updated spatial layer with updated codes to reflect strategic objective shapes. The following actions occur in the WIFTIS application when a data manager chooses the spatial fire planning process on the data management tab. It's important that a data manager understands what happens to existing content when the spatial fire planning option is selected. FMU level management requirements are immediately disabled and cannot be re-enabled. They can be recreated, however. All existing FMU shapes become strategic objective shapes. All existing FMU codes become strategic objective codes. All strategic objective codes associated with existing shapes are activated while all other codes are deactivated. Strategic objective text associated with deactivated strategic objective codes is deactivated. And administrative unit-wide strategic objectives and management requirements are unaffected. It's important that the data manager understands what happens to existing content in WIFTIS when the special fire planning option is selected. If you choose to switch back to the FMU planning process from the spatial fire planning process, the following actions occur in WIFTIS. All activated management requirements associated with a management requirement shape will be disabled and can never be re-enabled. They can only be recreated. All existing strategic objective shapes will be considered FMU shapes. Existing strategic objective codes will become FMU codes. Unit-wide strategic objectives and management requirements will be unaffected. You will also no longer be able to draw or upload management requirement shapes. Since switching to spatial fire planning deactivates management requirement text associated with the FMU planning process, this content will have to be re-uploaded to WIFTIS if an administrative unit chooses to switch back. This process can be much quicker if a data manager exported management requirements to an Excel spreadsheet prior to switching to special fire planning. This is accomplished by clicking the Excel icon at the top of the list on the objectives page. Data managers should understand what happens when they select the spatial fire planning process on the data management tab, and then carefully consider these points before moving from FMU planning to spatial fire planning. WIFTIS allows for the use of FMU planning or spatial fire planning, but not both. Prior to switching to spatial fire planning, Data managers should export the FMU planning entries to Excel and save them to a safe storage area. You can use these entries to recreate the FMU planning entries if for some reason you opt to return back to the FMU planning process. If a new or updated spatial layer needs to be submitted to WIFTIS for use with spatial fire planning, the overall transition process from FMU planning to spatial fire planning could take a few months as new spatial data is enabled in the national data layer on a quarterly schedule. As a result, switching to a different planning process should be done during the off-season to minimize potential incident documentation conflicts for fire managers.
Before switching to spatial fire planning, a data manager must do the following. Locate NEPA compliant planning documents to guide creation of spatial fire planning shapes and associated text. Choose to keep current FMU shapes or develop new strategic objective shapes. If you choose to keep your old FMU shape layer, the old FMU codes become strategic objective codes and can't be edited. If new strategic objective shapes or edits to the existing FMU shape layer are required, prepare the shape layer and its codes and then provide the spatial data to your agencies with this GIS contact. Download the Excel spreadsheet of management requirements from the data management tab and save this to a safe storage area. Change your administrative unit selection from FMU to Spatial Fire Planning on the Data Management tab. Modify existing strategic objective text or create new text and then associate each with the proper SO code if available. Develop management requirement text and associated shapes. Develop other unit shapes to display content that an administrative unit may not want populated in a decision automatically. Shapes will be discussed in greater depth in the WIFTIS video, Managing Shapes for Spatial Fire Planning. Spatial fire planning can be implemented in both WIFTIS training and production, since the databases used by each application are independent of one another. Choosing the spatial fire planning process in one application does not automatically choose it in the other. This makes WIFTIS training the ideal place for testing the spatial fire planning process for an administrative unit. Coming soon, you will soon be able to copy data management content from production to training. This will ensure that appropriate data is available for training. The concepts explained in this video are explained in the WIFTIS online help and in the spatial fire planning guidebook. WIFTIS online help can be accessed as page level help from within the application or from the WIFTIS homepage. The spatial fire planning guide is available from a link on these websites, the WIFTIS website and the Wildland Fire Management RDNA website. Visit other training videos in the series, the Data Management tab and its role in spatial fire planning, and Managing Shapes for Spatial Fire Planning. Thanks for joining us. This video has been brought to you by the staff of the Wildland Fire Management RDNA.